Yeah, the Youth Sense project is in particular is investigating how we can extend uh, the mind, the senses and what it means to be human uh, by using a variety of technologies. Uh, in particular we're interested in how we can address some deep philosophical questions to do with uh, our sense of self and uh, our awareness through using um, technologies uh, for example like vibrotactile feedback. So these are vibrotactile devices and I got one attached to each limb, which is absolutely crucial. So that what this means is, when the computer plays back a rhythm to me that I want to learn, then I'm feeling it in my body, and more to the point, um, the appropriate limb is feeling the appropriate pattern. These uh, little vib vibrotactile sensors, they feel a bit like uh, the uh, vibrating uh, battery on your mobile phone. Uh, basically, each vibration uh, should correspond to one uh, hit on a drum. There's a theory called sensory motor contingency, which says that in order to learn how to sense something properly and to deal with, manipulate the thing that you're sensing properly, then you have to have been in situations where your body movements affect what it is you're sensing. In the case of rhythms, polyphonic rhythms, rhythms that involve multiple instruments, for you to have experience of generating them and controlling them, you've got to use all of your limbs. You've got to use more than one limb. If you just sat there looking at bits of paper or um, if you're just listening to the sounds coming in through your ear, you're not getting this engagement of your whole body. Certainly it's got applications for beginners learning to play drums, um, but more widely than that it's useful for people learning to play any kind of instrument where they have to use more than one hand and it's also good for understanding music better, enjoying music better, analyzing music better, composing music better because you have a deeper understanding of the rhythms because you can you felt them and been able to reproduce them. Um, so we've got two goals. The first one is to build useful devices, so sensory augmentation devices. And the second goal is to use these devices to try and inform philosophy. One piece of work that we we're really interested in was an experiment that was done over 40 years ago by Paul Baki Rita. So what he did was uh, he took a camera image and he converted it into a vibration on the back of blind people. And after tens of hours of training, uh, they learn how to interpret that vibration and recognize objects in the world around them. And so we're looking at this idea of how the mind is extended and how the body is extended by using technologies. So we thought it'd be a good starting place would be to build our own um, tactile vision sensory substitution device or TVSS. So we use cheap off the shelf components with the idea that other people could take our designs and, and run with them. So what happens is um, we have a, a webcam that looks down at a table and our subjects stand at one end. They're blindfolded and we put headphones on them as well. And all they can feel is uh, an array of vibration on their belly. And basically as the ball rolls down the table, they feel the vibration roll down their abdomen. And if it's on the left hand side of the table, they'll feel it coming down here. On the right hand side, they'll feel it coming down here. Right, so now you've got that array on your abdomen. Is it nice and tight? Yes. So you shouldn't feel any vibration at the moment, but now you're going to feel a vibration and I'm going to make a vibration. I'm going to put the ball in this corner and it's going to make this motor, which is that one there, buzz. Okay, so if I put it there. So the, the computer program has worked out where the ball is. It's tracked it and it's made that motor buzz. And now if I move it along one, you'll feel the, the next motor vibrate. And if I move it along one more, You'll feel the next motor vibrate, and then that should be the bottom corner. So now if you move it a bit, you can get used to how that changes when you move the ball. We also track where the subject's hand is. We do that by, um, they wear a bicycle glove, which is day glow yellow, so it's easy to track. So as they move their hand, they'll feel a slightly gentler vibration moving across their abdomen. And basically their job is to try and get their hand vibration to coincide with the ball vibration. And if they do that, they can catch the ball. And people are remarkably good at it, so after only a few trials, most people can do it very well. The three philosophical issues that we think we can now explore with the sensory substitution device are 
Firstly, under what conditions does the technology become transparent? So your focus is no longer on the, the vibration, but on the objects around you. The second one is, how important is movement to help you learn how to use these devices? And are there differences between different sorts of movement? The third one is, why is it that blind people didn't like these technologies? And what can we do to make them seem phenomenologically richer, for want of a better term? They found them a bit emotionally empty, so we're going to explore how we can make them more significant for people. In this project, we're interested in uh, working out whether through modern technologies people can be more, made more aware of their posture and their movement. And this uh, violin study is looking at children who are just learning to play the violin. And in particular the bowing techniques that they need to learn for that. You can see it's quite a complex mo movement when you look at the upper arm because it first has to, uh, to come back backwards but then it has to, to go back again. To, to so what we are doing then is we, um, we have the motions, we, we measure the motions in real time. And uh, to give them feedback, we are using the vibrotactile um, motors to, to give the vibrations uh, when, they, uh, when they go off the trajectory or when they hold the, the violin in the wrong position. So for me, one of the really interesting things about this project is that we got funded by the um, Arts and Humanities Research Council to do speculative research, to work with philosophers, to focus on the philosophical questions. And that's where we started. But interestingly, out of the speculative research, some very practical projects have spun off. So we're building these very useful technologies.